Virtual Valley Games proudly presents Roblox Britannic, the patroness of the Mediterranean. Eight oh seven AM, twenty first of November, nineteen sixteen. His Majesty's Hospital Ship Britannic is sailing to the British sea base of Lemnos in the Aegean Sea, where she would take on board thousands of wounded soldiers from the Allied campaigns against Turkey in the First World War. She sails from Naples, Italy, on a scheduled round trip of two weeks from Southampton. Britannic is the third and final ship of the Olympic class, the youngest sister of the RMS Olympic and the infamous RMS Titanic. Britannic was originally designed to be fairly similar to her sisters Olympic and Titanic. Increased competition amongst transatlantic liners and greater expectations from passengers led designers to make significant changes to her accommodations. This would set Britannic's design apart from her two older sisters. The third class was given new entrances. The second class would be given the luxury of the very own gymnasium. First class passengers would enjoy many new improvements. These included a larger a la carte restaurant and new reception room on the deck, where the most elite passengers would dine in unparalleled style. A playroom where children could play instead of using one of the palm courts like on Olympic and Titanic. A ladies hairdresser salon in addition to the barber shop. New sitting rooms were added on sea deck as a result of the parlor suites having proved so popular on the Olympic and Titanic. Keeping up with the trends and expectations, first class would see the addition of many private bathrooms and washrooms for cabins. Although basic on Olympic and Titanic, the swimming pool in Britannic was to be completely redecorated to keep up with the trends of sumptuous swimming baths aboard the German liners. Even the already luxurious spaces such as the Grand Staircase were also improved. The boat and A-deck entrances were modified to accommodate a welt pipe organ. Ultimately, this musical instrument was never installed, but it still survives today. The decorative wrought iron panels designed to conceal the pipes on the organ were eventually auctioned off in London after the war. Many of Britannic's luxurious fittings were never installed due to her conversion to hospital ship in 1915. These were sold off over three separate auctions in London and Belfast in 1919. When the First World War broke out, construction of Britannic was placed on the back burner. Harland and Wolfe, the builders, shifted their work toward the war effort. The Allied invasion of Gallipoli showed that the British Admiralty would need larger ships to transport their wounded home from the far-off battlefields of the Mediterranean. The Cunard Ocean Liners, Mauritania and Aquitania, were requisitioned as troop ships. This was also done with the White Star Liner Olympic, the first sister of Britannic. Finally, the War Office decided to pay for the finalization of White Star's Britannic under the condition that it would be used as a hospital ship for the duration of the war. After the war ends, the ship would be scheduled to return to the hands of the White Star Line. Over 3,300 bunks were installed on Britannic to accommodate patients. The ship was painted white, with a green band broken by red crosses, the internationally recognized designation for a hospital ship. Both sides of the war had hospital ships under these markings, and both sides of the war agreed to care for whatever wounded they could. Therefore, it was understood that neither side should attack a hospital ship of any nationality. Prior to Britannic's voyage, the German submarine U-73 had laid two mine barriers in the Kea Channel, totaling approximately 12 mines. Now, mines are indiscriminate killers. The mine was not meant to target a, a hospital ship like Britannic, but rather it was laid uh, where the Germans thought that they would interdict British naval traffic going into or out of Greek ports. My name is Corporal Jack Waugh of the Royal Army Medical Corps. I had just finished breakfast and had come up on deck. 
I sat down on the hatchway while one of our chaplains with his map out was showing us different places of interest on the nearby shoreline. When Britannic hit one of the contact fuses on the mine, the mine detonated. Officer Dimensical staff enjoying nice breakfast at the crew change occur just down below, leaving water doors open. By 9.07 a.m., a disaster begins with a single sea mine laid by a U-boat two weeks earlier. Hit something. My first impression was that we had hit a mine and we would probably be safe. I gave orders to clear the lifeboats and have them made ready to be sent away should it necessitate. Captain Charles Bartlett, HMHS Britannic, 21st of November 1916. Captain Charles Bartlett came onto the bridge still wearing his pajamas. His first orders were to sound the emergency quarters alarm and to close the watertight doors. That doesn't sound good. He wasn't aware at that point that the four doors were jammed in the open position. He ordered the engines to stop and the lifeboats to be swung out and readied for lowering. At the same time, he gave the order to the wireless telegraph operators to send out an SOS call for distress. <coughs> I ordered the sending out of the SOS signal by wireless, but we were not receiving any replies whatsoever. They were for a while under the impression that the apparatus was down altogether, but they continued sending the messages out regardless of response. What the wireless operator didn't know is that the explosion had caused Britannic's hull to flex a bit, whipping the foremast and breaking some of the connections between the wireless aerial strung between the masts and the transmitter in the ship's silent room. What this meant was that Britannic could still send out an SOS message, but she could not receive any replies. I was on the bridge waiting for orders. My heart was in my mouth, but when I saw the captain standing there, Long cool and quiet, I thought to myself, it's all right. I felt a deal more comfortable. And I went to the locker and got up the captain's megaphone according to orders, and I stood alongside the captain on the bridge to see if he had any orders for me. The ship seemed to be leaning a bit to the starboard side, and she still seemed to be going ahead a little. Second Fremantle Scout Troop Patrol Leader, James Vickers. I permitted my staff to return to their cabins, so long as it was done with haste. We're all too familiar with the dangers of ship sinking. The Lusitania was only a year ago, and the Titanic only three years ago. Nurse matron of the HMHS Britannic, Miss Elizabeth Ann Dowes. As we were walking out of the saloon, the signal went and blast rang out from the siren. Not until then would I believe that there was any danger. I distinctly remember as we quietly walked down the beautiful marble staircase and along the long corridor, 
where the sun streamed in the portholes, lighting up all our lovely cabins. This was goodbye to everything. Our ship was sinking. How fast? We didn't know. Nurse aide de Garland. Voluntary aid detachment. which Britannic was sinking and slowed. So Captain Bartlett ordered the lifeboat launcher to be paused and the engine started again in an attempt to reach Kea Island. It's on FTEC actually. Wild Terror reaches EDEC. The EDEC portals are on the war on the starboard side, so they're gonna start busting through the portal soon. Six and five are out of commission. More starts pouring into boiler room four. We're definitely gonna sink. Power to the engines. This is not good. I think we're sinking fast. Abandoned ship. Abandoned ship. Just like a pitiful, dumb animal, tortured, her sirens blasting for help up to the very last. Captain C. A. Bartlett, the commander of the Britannic, stayed on the bridge giving orders to the officers through his speaking megaphone as the ship was going down under his feet. He not leave until the water lapped over him. The ship was sinking very quickly then. Go. had gone below early in the sinking to find supplies of bread from the ship's pantries to stop the lifeboats. He came out onto the deck to find the bridge submerged 
and the ship rapidly dropping in the water. It's time we get going. We need to abandon ship. Pull back, pull back. Turn, hard to starboard. Oh God, we're definitely watching this ship sink. Gotta get away. The ship is already dropping like an anchor. Glad I got off when I did. So we're definitely dropping below the surface. Fast. He dropped the bread and leapt into the sea with mere seconds to spare before the vessel had disappeared. When we reached the deck, the foremost of the four funnels was touching the water. And the bowels were completely submerged. The ship is sinking very fast. This is horrifying. I have a feeling we're going to be under the water. We jumped 80 feet into the sea from the second class quarter on sea deck. Oh god, and the funnels are falling. We watched the awesome sight of the mighty liner sink. Assistant Chief Engineer, Joseph Wolf. Thinking very fast, like way too fast. Look at that, just look. She's tipping on her side. There's someone on top of the funnel. How's that possible? It's gonna fall and they're gonna die by being crushed. Oh my God. It was indeed sad to watch our ship slowly but surely sink in. We could hear her boilers rumbling up and eccentric the water, and her immense funnels, through which one could have driven a coach and four, were ripped up with as little difficulty as tearing a piece of paper. Look at that, she's dropping like an anchor. Oh my god. I have a feeling she'll be gone soon. Oh my god. The boat is sinking. Oh my god. She's definitely going down by the head. The severe starboard list that's worsening every minute.
Oh my god, she's sinking very fast. The little on board are running out of time. She's capsizing. Gotta row away from the ship. Move it, move it. Oh my god, oh my god. This is terrifying. I don't think she'll last much longer. She's going. I think she just hit the bottom. Oh god, that didn't go good. The ship just hit the bottom. I just did with that capsize. His Majesty's hospital ship Britannic sank in 55 minutes. Three times the time it took for the Lusitania to sink, but only a third of the time it took for the Titanic to go down. Out of 1,066 souls on board, there were only 30 casualties in the sinking. Far fewer than most other shipwrecks of this size. 21 were members of the crew, and 9 were members of the Royal Army Medical Corps. Britannic remains the largest passenger shipwreck on the ocean floor. I'm trying to climb aboard. Way down there on the sea floor. are coming.
thanks for watching.